Hello, I'm Steve Livingston. I'm a professor at the School of Media and Public Affairs at George Washington University. The first thing I want to do is say how pleased I am to be able to help support the meeting here. The School of Media and Public Affairs is one of the supporting organizations. I'm here to talk about a collaborative project that included the, uh, the school. We, we call it the Mapping the Maps project. It involved also, though, a new initiative that's created by Internews, a, um, an organization here in Washington, D.C., that tries to advance openness and transparency around the world. We call it CrowdGlobe. Uh, it is intended to be a platform that will be used by researchers in a collaborative fashion to analyze data, mostly geospatial data. Uh, in this particular project, I was joined by two colleagues, Katie Ballard and Matt Heinemann, in a research project that allowed us to take a look at uh, a great deal of data from one of the Ushahidi platforms. In that work, we also were joined by this guy named Patrick Meyer and also Rob Baker, both serving as independent consultants in this particular initiative. We also had the support of various other people on both the GW faculty and, and other locations. What we're trying to do is really take a look at the, um, the CrowdGlobe uh, Ushahidi hosted deployment. We're asking various statistical questions about the, the appearance of the data. How, have the, how has this platform been used in the year or so that it was uh, deployed? There were 12,000, almost 13,000 deployments. One of the first things we discovered is 93% of those deployments really net went no further than what we call tire kicking. It was people uh, engaging with the platform. Indeed, 61% of them really never went beyond just clicking on the platform and taking a look. We can't go into power law distribution in the short amount of time that we have here, except to say that the pattern that emerged in our analysis is a power law distribution. Uh, a number of phenomena have that characteristic, including, it seems, these particular platforms. Crowd maps, uh, we took a chunk out of the power law distribution and asked certain questions about where they were uh, deployed. 30% in North America, 18% in Western Europe, 16% in Africa. We asked a series of questions also about the, uh, the kinds of topics that the deployments were used for. A lot of it had to do with emergency, media, natural disasters, health and medical concerns. Even if you were to take the, two, the top 10%, the bottom 10% of the deployments, you'd see certain commonalities, crime, environmental concerns, infrastructure concerns, animals. Bird lovers love this. They, they track where bird sightings are. There were certain regional differences, however. In North Africa and the Middle East, crime and safety was a concern. Human rights abuses were a concern. Emergency-related infrastructural issues were a concern. And, and this is the way in which they were deployed there and the purposes to which they were put. However, in Western Europe, similar patterns in North America, it was leisure and entertainment-oriented, non-emergency infrastructure um, deployments were used, a lot of media reports. So you see different patterns in use. Beyond just getting a sense of how the, the data uh, looked, we also queried, we asked questions of the people who used the, the technology. We wanted to know something about them. We got a fairly modest response in a survey instrument, uh, but this response was, actually had some very interesting uh, data points. Average age of the users was about 40 years old, very well educated, about 43% had, had postgraduate education. A good number of them had college educations. Uh, in terms of uh, what happened in their effort, they report a whole variety. The largest of the uh, reasons why something wasn't used was they had no intention in the first place. They were interested in just how the maps work. So the very complex array of responses to this. Those who, users who responded to the survey felt that they had been successful in raising awareness of their maps through a variety of ways. One of them was through community engagement, 23%. Another said successfully using social media, 6% by using traditional media. So in terms of, of simply engaging the public and getting awareness of the availability of the map was one of the first things that, uh, that people who were deploying these were trying to overcome. What do we expect to do with this? Well, first of all, already Ushahidi has, has used our findings to identify best practices. What we need to do as researchers at GW and elsewhere is understand, dig into the successful 500 deployments and find out why. We don't want to be lost. We need to stay focused <laughs> in our data analysis, and that's what we hope to do in the future. Thank you. <laughs>